been number one. You surely being me. I thought I I could be what I wanted to be. I thought that I could be. But I can't even walk without you holding my, my hand. I thought that I could do a lot on, a lot on my own. As a mighty, mighty big man, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. We'll have a witness in heaven, Lord. I can't.
know if it had not been for the Lord. How I many you know you didn't make it here on your own? Some of those issues, some of those things that you got through, didn't nobody do it but the Lord. That heart attack, that cancer, those times when you were on your sick bed, didn't nobody bring you out but the Lord. And we stand here as living witnesses. I don't care, Conrad, whatever you've been through. Did nobody bring you out of it but the Lord? We all have a testimony. Lord, I can't even walk without you. I can't make it without you. Holy. Praise for the choir and for the musicians, if you will. Praise, he's just God, he's good. It's like that. Come on, uh, turn to Acts with me, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter in the book of Acts. Familiar passage of scripture, I probably preached it, preached it 10, 15 times myself. Second chapter. Maybe passage. Get in that verse one. We need to say, I got the word. I don't need me to wake up with it. There's some people still turning. Acts chapter two. I'm going to begin reading that verse one. I'm keep my balance. I'm reading from the New King James, and the scripture says, When the day of had fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That is the reading of our scripture this morning. From that passage of scripture, this morning, saints of God, I want to preach from the subject, please come again. Please come again. Let us pray. Father, our God, Lord, we thank you, God, for this another opportunity to be in your house of prayer on the very first Sunday of a brand new month, Lord God. We stand here, we sit here with the testimony, God, that you've been good to us, that you spare us, that you let our rolling moments, that our moments roll on into another month, into another opportunity to worship you and praise you. So, Lord, as I have this chance to stand again behind the sacred desk, God, as always, there's nothing I can do without you, God. So, Lord, I pray now to anoint it with fall afresh. And I might be able to share these things you've given me in our quiet time together. Whatever you want to do, Lord, however you want to do it, God, I simply ask that you would have your way in this place. Lord God, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Let us hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Lord, we know your word won't return to you for but it will accomplish everything that you set it out to do. Have your way now, God. God, have your way. For it's in the name of Jesus that I pray. And I thank you now. And all God's people say amen. Amen. amen and amen. From the subject, please come again. Beloved, early in the week, 
and seek the Lord for a word to give on this first Sunday in June. I took a deep breath and I realized that we were barking on the first Sunday that's halfway through the year. I thought that I had a word for the day. I began to look at the text. The Spirit began to say some stuff to me. I thought that was in the direction that I was going to go, didn't it? Only to again be redirected by the Lord. I was sitting in the back of my daughter's car and we were getting ready to go somewhere. And the reality is set in that this Sunday is what the church calls Pentecost Sunday. Mm -hmm. As that reality hit me, Deacon Davis, I began to think about Pentecost. Of course, anytime I think about Pentecost, this text always comes to mind. So when that hit me, Deacon Moore, the Spirit said to me, come again. Come again. But there is some time, sometime, as we are on this journey called life, we need, brother, whether a do-over. We need some stuff to happen again. We need a moment of deja vu every once in a while to get back whatever good thing that we had. See, reality is, reality is, if you ever experienced joy, and you don't have joy in your life right now, you need joy to come again. Am I right about it in here? Yeah, y'all talk back to me. If you ever had peace, and you don't have peace right now, then you need peace to come again. Am I right about it? If you've ever had comfort in your situation, and you're not comfortable right now, then you need comfort to come again. If you've ever been stable and now instability has set in, you need stability to come again. And when you look at this country that we live in and its politics, it once was sane. It once made some sense. But now insanity has set in. And I come to tell you this morning, we need sanity to come again. Do I have a witness? For some of us in our personal life, some stuff is out of order. And we need order to come again. Uh, some people were killed just last week of gun violence all over again in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And people are still making excuses as to why we can't do nothing about it. I come to tell you, it's not rational, they say, and we need rationality to come again. Beloved, I come to tell you this morning that sometimes we need some stuff to come again. You need to get back to a better place, a happier season, a more pleasant place from the past. And I believe that the Spirit is speaking to us on this Pentecost Sunday that we need a refreshing. We need a replenishing. We need a re-up of the Holy Ghost. But let me say it one more time, saints of God. We need a re-up of the Holy Ghost. Not only in our lives, but we also need it in our churches and in our nation. We need the Holy Spirit to come again. We need the Holy Spirit to fall again. As a matter of fact, saints of God, uh, 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 we need the Holy Spirit to come again. We need to uh, get back to doing some stuff that we used to do. Uh, we, we, we're doing some stuff that, that we had stuff. We, we don't act like we was acting. We, 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 anger is flaring up in us. And discontentment is flaring up in us. Jealousy is flaring up in us. And we don't know why. Anybody been there? You just find yourself getting madder than you used to. You find yourself dealing with some stuff you didn't used to have to worry about. Yeah, stuff is flying up in us that didn't used to fly up in us. But I come to tell somebody on this Pentecostal Sunday that you are in a fight. And I said this last week that we're in a fight. A fight for our mind. A fight for our heart. A fight for our spirit. And let me tell you the devil is not playing. Anybody here know the devil ain't playing? No, he ain't playing. He is throwing the whole kitchen sink at us as individuals. And he's throwing the rest of the house in the world. Y'all ain't talking in here. I said he's throwing the whole kitchen sink at us one night. 
as individuals and at the, and at the world, he's throwing the whole house out. He is super busy. So we need to happen what happens here in the text. Church, we need the Holy Spirit to fall on our lives again. Give me 10 more minutes, I'm gone. When we look at the text, it's very, very familiar. This meeting follows Christ that takes 50 day, takes place 50 days after the Sabbath of the Passover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as they celebrated what they call the Feast of Weeks, acknowledging the first fruits of the wheat harvest. And there are three things that take place in this text right. that I want to point out, Dick and Harden, that happen and we're going home. Three things that happen in this text. And we need it to come and happen again. Three things that's going to happen in this text that we need to happen again. First of all, this is the birth of the church. The church is born right here in this text. As the Spirit falls on these worshipers who have gathered, and beloved, you and I, as well as the nation that we live in, we need a rebirth. Yeah, I'm coming to tell you. We need a rebirth. Saints of God, we know what birth is. Birth is the moment that life comes to be. It's the moment of awakening. It is the beginning. And that's what some of us need. We need to have life resuscitated in us because the world has drained us the world has taken our strength the world has dried us up both spiritually and physically and we need a rebirth to take place in this text sister laverne as these gatherers followers have gathered together god shows up in the form of the holy spirit he shows up in the form of the holy spirit in because they're in one place on one accord. And I come to tell you that in order for rebirth to take place, some things have to line up. In order for rebirth to take place, some things have to line up. That's what being on one accord is. It is the lining up of the body and the lining up of situations. Getting on the same page, having the same mindset. And many of us are in need of a rebirth because our mindset is jacked up. We say it one more time. Many of us are in need of a rebirth because our mindset is jacked up. The enemy has hijacked our minds and carnality has taken total control. We're pushing carnal values. We're pushing carnal mentality. We're pushing carnal views and it's keeping our minds in our actions from lining up with God. Y'all want to talk to me? It's keeping us from being on one accord with God. So we need a rebirth. We need the spirit to come again. I don't know who I'm talking to in here this morning. I expect I'm talking to all of us in here. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing. I'm going to let you go. It's going to be real simple. First thing we need is a rebirth. But then the second thing we need is a feeling. Rebirth, we need a feeling. We need the Holy Spirit to fill us. To come again and fill us. See, what is happening in this world and in our churches is that too many of us are operating on a less than full time. We're operating on less than food. Yep. If you look at verse 4, verse 4 says they were filled. Mm. But that when you are full, mm. there is no room Amen. No for anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. When you're full, ain't no room right. for nothing else. Right. One thing my daddy used to tell us when we were growing up, when we got our own cars, he would say to us, Keep your tank full of gas. That's what he would tell us. 
He said, keep the tank full of gas. Now, I know that can be very expensive these days. <laughs> but he said, keep your tank full of gas. But his thought pattern was the more. The more gas in the tank, the less room for trash and debris. The more gas in the tank, the less room for trash and debris. The less room for stuff to get in the carburetor. The less room for stuff to get in the fuel injector. And beloved, I come to tell you that many of us this morning, we need the Holy Spirit to come and fill us again because we let too much trash and debris get in our tanks. I know it's Pentecost Sunday, but it's going to be a little tight through here. We're going to get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much trash and debris is getting into our tank. See, in a car, the gas tank holds what fuels the car. Mm -hmm. It holds what makes it go. Mm -hmm. And in you and I, the heart is what makes us grow. Right. It, and what makes us go, it makes everything operate. Right. And if our heart is full of trash mm -hmm. and debris, mm -hmm. what's in us is what's going to come out. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me in here this morning. What's in us is what's gonna come out of us. When we are not full of the spirit in our hearts, trash comes out. Hate comes out. Envy comes out. Jealousy comes out. Racism comes out. Destruction comes out. Anger comes out. Malice comes out. And all that stuff I just mentioned is trash. I ain't got no help in here this message. But when you are full of the spirit, when our taste is full of the spirit, there's no room for the trash. And when there's no room for the trash, mother we move. Love comes out. Joy comes out. Mercy comes out. Peace comes out. Grace comes out. Goodness comes out. Kindness comes out. Gentleness comes out. Love suffering comes out. And when that stuff comes out of us, we are full of the Spirit of God. We are operating effectively for the kingdom of God. We need to be filled again. Holy Spirit, come again. Y'all make me work too hard. I'm getting ready. Then last but not least. We need the Holy Spirit to come again because with it comes the power and the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. We need it to come again because with it comes the power and the presence. Comes the presence and the power of the Lord. I got to say that in the right order because that's how I'm going to deal with it. Comes the presence and the power of the Lord. The Bible says in verse 2, it says, and suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. Beloved, that sound that came was the presence of God coming into the house. I believe that many of us in this country that we live in have lost the presence of God. We have pushed God out of our lives. Let me tell you, help. Folk won't return to the church from the pandemic. They pushing them out. Folk don't pray like they used to pray. They pushing them out. Folk won't serve like they used to serve. They pushing them out. Folk don't believe like they used to believe. They pushing them out. Folk won't read their Bible. They pushing them out. Folk won't reverence the name of the Lord. They're pushing them out. We need the Spirit to come again because we have pushed God out. A whole lot of stuff going on in His name, but He ain't in it. Y'all ain't gonna talk about it. Everybody using His name, but He ain't in it. God is not in mess. Let me say it one more time. God is not in mess. If it's sin, then God ain't in. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. If it is sin, then God ain't in. Because sin separates us from God. So we need his presence. Need his presence. Need him to fall again. Sister Ferguson, we need his presence. 
But one more thing, my friend, and we're going home. We need the spirit to come again. The spirit. Holy spirit. Because we need another touch yes, sir. of his power. Yes, sir. Right. 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 Well, the Bible says wow. that when the wind came, mm. there appeared under them mm. cloven tongues. Yes, yeah. Cloven tongues like as fire. Mm. And it set upon each of them. Wow. And they began to speak in other tongues. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Charles, I'm gone now. But I come to tell you that we need the spirit to come again because we need the power of God. God can take what is natural and give it his power and it becomes supernatural. I said God can take what is natural and God will give it his power and it becomes supernatural. In other words, his power can do what no other power can do. It can do what is unexplained. His power made a donkey talk to baby. His power made a fish swallow junk and then spit him up. His power made trumpet sing and bring down the wall of Jericho.